That's me. The artist and animator Aidan Hickey is an established figure on the Irish art scene. He mentioned to a friend that he was thinking of painting a scene from one of the chapters of Ulysses. His friend replied, I hope you're not going to try and paint all 18. Aidan thought about this and decided, why not? And so he set off on the mammoth task of delivering his dream. In 2018, Aidan unveiled nine of his paintings during Bloomsday at the Duke Street Gallery. Unusually, Aidan insisted that none of the paintings could be sold. His idea was that when finished, they would all be housed in one suitable art space. Okay, no Joyce denies any involvement with the Surrealists, but he knew them, and I suspect was influenced. The principal influence here, of course, was Flaubert, whose Temptation of St. Anthony inspired Joyce and inspired so many painters of, of the fantastic. But what I'm trying to come at here is that Joyce was a master of the realistic and fantastic, as is Mr. Hickey, as we can see by looking at these paintings. Uh, he is, first of all, a fine technician, and secondly, he has that surreal theme in him, as you will see over there, for example, Mr. Bloom flaying at Lestragonians. Uh, like Joyce, also, uh, Aidan is a humorist. Uh, Joyce insisted that Shalesis was a comic book, a funny book. He said, uh, on my word as a gentleman, there's not a serious word in it. <laughs> well, whether Joyce was a gentleman or not is kind of a debatable question. Uh, he certainly wanted to be a gentleman. He had his, his white suit, his cane, uh, his, his uh, inordinate preoccupation with over-tipping people. But I always feel that if, if he were to build himself, he would consider himself like the musical entertainer Billy Bennett, who styled himself almost a gentleman. I think that choice was almost a gentleman. He was also almost a Jesuit, of course. But uh, at any rate, uh, his gentlemanliness is debatable. Uh, that the muse was his was the comic muse is not. Uh, Thalia is Joyce's muse. He says of himself, Summer, I would rather be a red nosed comedian than a blue jawed tragedian. He says, I am only a great choker of the universe when he gets to the wake. So um, I think these pictures of Aidens demonstrate that an artist can be serious without being solemn. There are no wise solemn, there are serious paintings, there are serious works of art. But practically nothing, if we ex accept. Richard Hamilton's extraordinary series of etchings, uh, or prints, uh, practically nothing, practically no one took on the idea of illustrating Ulysses section by section, which is a formidable undertaking. We're here today to celebrate an artist whose work in progress, though as yet but half realised, constitutes already an astonishing achievement, one which I think, like Joyce's last masterpiece, as Beckett says, glows and blazes and coalesces and like that masterpiece, is here to be referred to again and again, because there's endless information and ideas and jokes in these pictures. You can go back and back to them. I, I, I intend so do. Now, to this matter of Proteus. Uh, Daedalus walks, uh, as the note tells us over there, he asks himself, is he walking into eternity alongside the mud strand? He's certainly walking into immortality about it and pondering the ineluctable modality of the visible, the sea god Proteus, the shape changer, mirroring his long monologue. When Ezra Pound sent that episode to the Little, to the little Review, Margaret Anderson, on reading the opening sentences, explained, this is the most beautiful thing we'll ever have. we would paint it if it's the last effort of our lives. So I'm very pleased that uh, my friend Roland uh, uh, has made these beautiful prints. Uh, I'm not sure if they're perhaps the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, but they're pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. And I would prefer myself a print of Les Dragonians, because it's so crammed with detail and so crammed with humour. But there you go. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say?
I would love to think that all these images would be available as prints at some stage, because as we've said, I think they're going to have to be sold as a unit. It would be a tragedy to break this thing up. And we have another. We're still waiting for nine. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the late John Ryan, who went to an auction in the 1950s to buy a pop-up toaster, bought the Bailey instead. And having found that he had the Bailey, he thought it would be a good idea to install the door of number seven, Eccles Street, the fictional address of the Blooms, which he did in the lobby. And later he asked Patrick Cavanaugh, whose diary he was publishing an envoy every month, to say a few words at its unveiling. The poet said, among other things, I now declare this door irrevocably shut. <laughs> <laughs> It has been my pleasure to speak at, and my privilege now to declare this exhibition irrevocably open. <laughs> A critic once said that if the paintings speak for themselves, the painter should keep his mouth shut. So, if I may speak briefly about myself, um, had I been born centuries ago, I probably have made a modest living painting Madonnas and Stations of the Cross for churches in provincial towns. <laughs> but in our time, an agnostic narrative painter has no sacred text to work from and not much prospect of making a living. But it did occur to me one day that in writing Ulysses, James Joyce provided Dublin with its own private Bible, almost. Among many other things, the novel is a collection of ambiguous parables about the people who live in the houses and walk on the streets of this city. And once I had absorbed that idea, I began very tentatively to draw pictures and make paintings about the miracle of Leopold Bloom. So the only other people who are involved in this event are you, the visitors to the gallery. Um, it's often said that no painting is complete until it finds a responsive audience. So I do hope that at least one of the paintings will resonate with each of you. I also hope, sincerely, that in about two years' time, we will assemble again to view the complete set of 18. So thank you all for coming. Since this film, Aidan has completed 14 of the chapters. <laughs>